Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you are all well, you beautiful, beautiful people. That's correct. You're beautiful. You're amazing. And thank you for being there. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. And this is video two of two. So if you missed the first one, go check it out. Remember? Not yet. After this one. It's a good one. Shocking. Anyway, we're sticking in Idaho, but not in Moscow, Idaho. Going to another part of the state. Because the question is, isn't it, in the Idaho 4 case, it's all about whether something could have happened and people covered it up, hit it up. And people have sort of pointed the finger and said, if it wasn't Brian Koberger, who would it, who would it be? Who could it be? And a lot of people have pointed the fingers towards potentially other students, people who have vanished, disappeared, left, never come back. And even though the people who say that are frowned upon, they're called conspiracy theorists, some people have just said, you are the Brian Koberger lovers, you love Brian. Why don't you go on a date with Brian? You have a tattoo of his face on you with a love heart and all that. No, we just want justice. We want the people who, or person, Freudian slip, who did this crime in Moscow, Idaho, to pay the price for it. Pay the price for it, not their price. Again, Freudian slip. There's going to be plenty of them in the next 12 months. But look, do these things exist? Do cover-ups exist? Does it happen where people lose their lives, when people turn on one another, people get involved in the nefarious things, they bite off more than they can chew, and then they get deleted? Or as JB Gunner would say, fucking murdered. Would the, is that something that happens? And the people who are left behind all of a sudden grow amnesia. They become mute, don't want to say anything. Let's touch on this. This is the Silver Valley Teens. Some of you will have heard of this case. Some of you won't. If you haven't, strap yourselves in. This is mental. So here we go. Where is the truth? Investigating the Silver Valley teen deaths. Three Silver Valley teenagers are dead. Their families and the former deputy coroner suspect foul play. Investigators do not. KHQ investigated. Where is the truth? It has always it was always considered a joke but the saying was if you wanted to commit murder do it in Shoshong County Shushon Shushon you'll get away with it said former deputy coroner Dave Roos I've seen deaths in a lot of different forms and shapes but it gets back to that gut instinct thing if it looks wrong if it feels wrong it is wrong Walk like a duck, talk like a duck, it's a duck. Brianna Cook, Dylan Parker, and Ashley Sullivan were murdered. It's an important statement. It's a conclusion that has consumed Ruse, or Ruse, looks like Goose, could be Ruse, for more than two years. October 25th, 2013. It's funny how Idaho and all these little places like that, nothing happened up to this date. It was a fucking shit show before was a normal night for Brianna Cook. She was out celebrating her big sister Bethany's birthday. Their mum, Teresa Palin, had turned in for the night. I was sleeping and I got a phone call, Teresa said. She raced to the hospital. The doctor came out and said, I'm sorry, mum, your daughter didn't make it. I'll get her cleaned up so you can say goodbye. Palin's daughter, Brianna, was dead. Hanged in the shower at her father's Pinehurst home. I was so confused, she said. It feels like kind of sliding off the edge of the world. Brianna had spent the evening with Bethany and friends. They had been partying at a home on Two Mile Road in Osborne. Police reports would show drugs and booze were flowing freely. While at that party, something seemed to upset Brianna. It didn't surprise Bethany. She got mad, but that was Brianna, Bethany said. You'd fight and then she'd text me and say, I love you, sissy. This time there would be no text. Brianna took off and Bethany and friends set out to find her. They dropped off at her dad's house and once they did. Police records show Brianna's father didn't hear any sort of struggle from his daughter. He found her hanging from an extension cord about an hour after she returned home. The autopsy report clearly she states she died from asphyxia due to hanging, but it also notes trauma on her head. The medical examiner referenced injuries on a finger, leg, and lower lip as well. 
All indications pointed to a teen suicide except for one troubling, troubling, troubling quirk that Brianna had. This is the important bit. Pay attention. She did not know how to tie. Not even her own shoes, Palin said. She just couldn't get it. She wouldn't have tied it. She couldn't have. It's not possible. It wasn't just a family who noticed some red flags. I got a phone call from the coroner down in Boise, Ruse said. It, he's Ruse now, whatever. He said, Dave, we have a suicide. Can you go check it out? The Shoshon County coroner was out of town that Friday night. Then deputy coroner Dave Ruse knew he'd be called if something happened. There was just a feeling in the air that wasn't right, Ruth said. We had a, teen, a dead teenager here. I can't put my finger on what was wrong, but something just felt not right. Ruth also recalled the goose egg on Brianna's head. Police documents said she hit the floor as her body was cut down. That troubled anyone who had been in the tiny shower. If I wanted to commit suicide, I'd have to get on my knees, Bethany said. She had a mark on her head like she'd been hit, Ruth said. And there was more. There was no scene containment, Rue said. Anyone could come in and out. But perhaps most unsettling to all involved were some of Brianna's final words as she fled the home where she was partying. Pay attention. She either saw or heard something that extremely upset her, Rue said. She left that party very angry, very upset. She was heard saying, I'm not staying quiet any longer. I will not cover for them anymore. The next thing you know, Brianna is gone. And let's think back to the Idaho 4 case and a certain conversation between a certain two girls with a male in airshot. What did you tell Adam? I told him everything. They're going to get you for this. Very similar. Still, police found no signs of foul play that night and Brianna Cook's death was treated as a suicide. Brianna would not be the only teen whose death would raise Dave Ruse's suspicions. I have a hard time believing he got up to where he was at, or, was at on his own, said Dylan Parker's mother, Mona Rupp. It was just 78 days after Brianna Cook died that Dylan's mother was diving into Osborne, Osborne to meet her son. He had been drinking, she said. I could tell he was drinking. He just called and asked for a ride home. We were going to meet at the gas station. She said the tone of her son's voice was chilling. It was raised. It sounded panicky. Dylan was hanging out with his friends at the same house Brianna Cook left back in October, two hours before she was found dead. So there's your connection. I drove up to the house where he was at, Rupp said. My dad and I drove up two mile to turn round. When we got to the top of the turnaround, there was clean snow and no Dylan. Soon after, his phone was shut off. It didn't go, I didn't go to bed all night, Rupp said. It would be 10 more days before Mona Rupp would get confirmation of what her intuition already had told her. Her son was dead. You get in dark places. The gas station where Dylan was supposed to meet his mum was less than a mile from the home where he was partying. Despite that short distance, investigators say Dylan wandered the other way. You can see the lights of Osborne when you look up the other way. It's And when you look up the other way, it's just dark, Rob said. He knew which way he was going. He grew up there, and as any boy there in the mountains, he he's used to the mountains. Idaho State Police documents say Dylan's autopsy revealed he had alcohol and drugs in his system the night he died. They believe that combined with exposure to the elements killed him. I don't deny my son died of hypothermia, Rupp said. What I don't understand is how he got up there. There were no footprints that day, no tire tracks, there was nothing. How did he get up there? Dylan was also found without pants or boots. Experts say it's common for someone experiencing hypothermia to remove their clothes. Dylan's body was covered with injuries consistent with tumbling through the woods. But what has troubled Roos about Dylan's autopsy report is that is what was not there there were no injuries to his feet and this was a boy walking in the woods rue said i know it's been argued away that a lot of the scratches on his body were because he was staggering around the bush and trees yet the bottom of his socks were clean and no injuries to his feet 
yes he froze to death he was inebriated under the influence i won't dispute any of that but i don't believe this boy wandered up all on his own and laid down and died and this would not be the end of the deaths 107 days after dylan was found another one I believe on the night of April 29, 2014, my daughter was murdered and it was made to look like a suicide, said Kerry Rickman. Ashley was found hanging from a tree located on some property near a home in Kootenai County. I get a phone call from the coroner. His exact words are, Dave, there's another one, Ruth said. The news was shocking, especially because Ashley was an advocate for people who had suicidal thoughts, like the two teens before her. Ashley also once attended Kellogg High School. She was everybody's best friend, Rickman said. She got along with everyone. Ashley's mum said her daughter was devastated by the loss of Dylan and Brianna. She, she said she was scared. But what... But of what specifically? Her mother still doesn't know. Officers found Ashley with a toe strap type rope around her neck. The autopsy showed pot in her system. What stood out to Ruse immediately about Ashley was an airy, airily similar wound to Brianna's on her forehead. It was like you could take Brianna's and Ashley's foreheads side by side and you couldn't tell them apart, Ruse said. But Ruse said that's not noted in the autopsy. A few weeks after Ashley's body was found, Dave Roos's career ended as deputy coroner. Three weeks later, I came in and I was terminated, he said. They told me they let me go because they were hiring a licensed person. They then, then they hired an MRT, which is what I was. I lost my job because I refused to be quiet. KHQ has been investigating these deaths for more than a year now. The Idaho State Police wouldn't do an online, uh, do an on-camera interview about Dylan Parker and Brianna Cook, but the findings listed in the reports are clear. They state that Dylan died of hypothermia with drugs and alcohol contributing. They said that rep said in reports Brianna's death was hanging by ligature. The report also noted the drugs in her system may have contributed to thoughts of suicide. It did release this statement. Both the Cook and Parker case are closed. Our detectives looked at many different angles in both cases and foul play is not suspected in either. Of course, if a citizen has information that would indicate foul play and they have not talked previously or they have not talked previously to law enforcement, they can call the agencies that originated the cases. This would be the Pinehurst Police Department in the Cook case or the Shushan County Sheriff's Office in the Parker case. Coot and I County investigated handled Ashley Sullivan's case. They said technically the investigation is still active as they are waiting for some final paperwork. They said they do suspect Ashley committed suicide. While Ashley's body was found in Kootenai County, she was transported to Shushan County, making coroner Lonnie Deuce the responsible party listed on her autopsy report as well. Deuce Cox told KHQ over the phone that all three cases have been thoroughly investigated and in his opinion there is nothing pointing to foul play with any of them. Dylan's mother has now hired a private investigator. Brianna's family has a petition for the FBI to get involved. As for Dave Roos, these kids still haunt me, he said. There is no doubt in my mind that there is somebody and likely more than one person out there that knows something, that knows why Brianna is dead, why Ashley is dead, and why Dylan is dead. Somebody knows something. The Pinehurst City Council will have a meeting in the coming weeks to discuss Brianna Cook's case. So there you have it. Let me know what you think down below. Again, Idaho, again, we have deaths. And don't get me wrong, we also know that around the Idaho 4 case, there are some other deaths that have been sort of mentioned, you know, in the, in the background of these as well. Hannah Clary, for instance, um, Hudson Lindau. Um, and I'm not saying they're all connected, but what I'm saying is there's a lot of things happening in Idaho where there are questions afterwards. And it's like with these three people who have lost their lives here, the families, there are people who were involved in in the investigational parts of that that were subsequently let go because they were asking questions. And maybe it was just because they were asking questions and the authorities thought this bloke's a nutcase and he we don't need nutcases working there. Who knows? But... Read into it as you will. People have lost their lives. There's questions. And when you 
look at some of the nuances in these cases and in the Idaho 4 case, this is where you end up, isn't it? This is where you end up. If there is no definitive closure to a case and there are things like the conversation in the Idaho 4 case, what did you tell Adam? All these things we talked about, and then you end up with deceased students, then people are going to be like, hmm, someone don't sit right. And that's why things don't sit right. Let me know down below, and I'll catch you all in the next one.